Unity Radio. Welcome, everyone, to this Wednesday conversation. My name is Alex Samaras, along with my co host, Albert Sita. And on the phone, we have UFC Bantamweight fighter Alex Perez. Alex, how's it going, man? Good. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. So, um, well, we want to talk to you about your UFC debut December 9th. You made your debut on the UFC Fight Night uh, Swanson versus Ortega uh, card. You were a victorious in the submission, Anaconda choke in the second round, just under two minutes. How are you feeling, man? Must have been a pretty good uh, Christmas present, right? Uh, yeah, so good, you know. So uh, Fighting in Fresno in front of my home in town, it was pretty cool. So this is your, your UFC debut. We always hear about you know, the UFC jitters. Did you kind of have that going in or kind of being, you know, in your hometown, did that kind of help with the nerves or do you, do you not think that about, about that at all? What was it like kind of leading up to making your UFC debut? Um, it was it was cool. I, I've been there before. I've cornered people in the UFC, so I know what it's all about. The only difference is that I was fighting. And that, that was back-to-back Anaconda choke wins for you, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I, on the contenders and then – this fight. Yeah, so is that is that like a go-to submission for you? And it's actually one of the cooler chokes out there. Um, a lot of people see the rear naked choke, and I think this is one of the cooler ones. Is that is that like your go-to right there? Uh, no, I, I like we drill all this stuff. All the time, so we're just, we're yeah, so you, uh, as you mentioned here, you were on UFC's uh, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series, and then from there you trans transitioned to um, your UFC debut. What's it been like, you know, kind of getting in contact with the UFC? You have an extensive record. You're only 25 years old, but yet you're, you have a 19-4 and four record. You've been fighting professionally since 2011. When you finally got that call um, for the UFC, what were kind of going through your um, – what kind of emotions were going through your mind right now? Um, it, was, it was good. You know, I can feel like I should have been there a long time ago, but things take, take its course. So it was meant to be, you know, like got signed to UFC and then – they had a fight card in Fresno. Man, that's that's kind of you, you can't a lot a lot of people can't even write that kind of story. You know, what I mean, you get signed, you make your debut in your home area. So tell us about uh, your training camp and what do you train out of? Uh, I train at down south, and in Team Oyama with Colin Oyama, and then we have Ten Planet Jiu Jitsu with Ron Turner and Casey Halstead. So uh, how how have your coaches and your, your teammates kind of shaped you to the fighter you are today? Um, they've helped a lot. Like Coach Oyama is the mastermind behind everything. He's been in the sport a long time. And uh he you know, the way he thinks it just helps everybody around us. Yeah. And, you, uh, you have six career submissions. You, you, do you kinda of consider yourself a, a grappler, a jiu jitsu guy or do you kinda of say for more more well rounded and you just haven't had a chance to showcase your stand up yet? Uh, more around, around there. I actually like punching people more than I like chucking them out. <laughs> but uh, just to go back to your submissions too, um, a lot of people know like you know like the gray C Jiu Jitsu and stuff like that. And um, only the hardcore fans, I think, really uh, have heard of Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu. Can you just real quick? Can you just touch upon uh, that style of Jiu Jitsu? Uh, yeah, I think it's more. Uh, it's nogi and it's more like wrestler friendly. Uh, you know it. it it helps me a lot. I've trained under uh, Jiva Santana for a long time, and uh, I just like to implant it. The, their moves and things like that helped me a lot more than I was getting with the gi. Yeah, you mentioned that it's wrestler friendly. So, were you a wrestler growing up and in high school and stuff? Uh, yeah, I started wrestling at a young age, and then, uh, you know, obviously you went over to MMA. That's interesting. So, how does the Tenth Planet kind of cater to more to the to the wrestler? Is it just like the different move sets or like different kind of aggression styles? That's, that's I've never heard that before because I'm obviously I'm still new to the Jiu Jitsu and the Tenth Planet. But how how is it catered more to wrestlers? Um, for one, it's no gi. You know, more most uh, Jiu Jitsu is gi. Yeah. No gi is you know starting to take over, and uh, it just. Teaches you all the right handles like gi. You have to grab the lapel and stuff like that. With no gi, you know, it's just like grappling, uh, yeah. wrestling. You know, you know, we don't wear any any uh, gis or anything like that. So I think that helps me a lot. It's more of a natural. You just get your singlet and you know whatever you wear with no gi. I told that makes total sense. And did you always feel like you wanted to be in combat sports because you were in wrestling first and you feel like? 
that was a transition to make? Or what was that one moment or click that you're like, you know what, I can do this professional? Because you're a real young guy. And again, like we mentioned in the beginning, you're 19 and 4. I mean, you really had to start super young and had to make that decision super early. Well, uh, I kind of just wanted to try it out, see how, you know, see how it was. I didn't want to grow up and be like, oh, I could have done that. So I took my first amateur fight. Then I, I just continued from there. You know, I fell in love with the com- the competing part. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I just took over from there. Yeah, uh, I was looking at your record. You're kind of averaging three to four fights a year. Is that kind of the pace you like right now? Yeah, I like to stay active. You know, I'm hoping to get on in February, March. That's insane, man. So you're basically training year-round. You're kind of on a diet year-round, right? Uh, I want to say the diet part all the time. <laughs> but uh, Especially now during the holidays, right? <laughs> oh, man, the holidays are the worst for me. Yeah, well, at least you kind of had your you had. I mean, your Thanksgiving might have sucked, but at least you, had, you get to enjoy your Christmas, right? No, yeah, that you know that is a plus. Hey, I, I think you're a young fighter, and now I think we're hearing less and less more of you know guys doing you know just a strict training camp and kind of being in shape year round. Is that kind of what you're seeing now in the gyms, like just guys being ready year round instead of going okay, we have a you know eight week camp here before a fight. Do you kind of prefer to just kind of stay in shape year round? Yeah, you know, you never know when you're going to get a short yeah. uh, notice opportunity. So it's better to be in shape and take advantage of it than have to miss out because you're out of shape. And then you just fought recently in your dream scenario. When do, When's the next time you want to be uh, in the octagon again? Uh, I wouldn't mind fighting in February in Texas or in March in Vegas. You know, in my two ideal spots. I've always wanted to fight in Vegas. Oh, wow, that's cool. Hey, Alex, man, we want to um, thank you for taking the time. We'll let you go, man. Enjoy your holiday week coming up. A happy holidays. Again, Alex Perez. Where can people follow you on uh, social media? Uh, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Alex Perez MMA. And then you have any, any sponsors or you want to give a shout-out to anybody um, who might be listening? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I'd like to thank CB, Ivory CBD. You know, they're a big help on my recovery, my sleeping, uh, milk and eggs. Those guys are amazing. They, you know, help me out with uh, with groceries. Uh, perfecting athletes. So they're amazing. Got my diet on point. Um, and just all my local sponsors, ATTC. Uh, those guys are amazing. They always support the wrecking bar. Always support um, defense soap for keeping me on the mat. Uh, cannot go worldwide for all the great gear and uh, all my training stuff. And then, uh, yeah, just. Thank everybody. Thank my team, my friends, and my family. All right, Alex, man. We look forward to seeing you in the octagon again, hopefully, like you said, in early 2018, man. We'll have you on again uh, to promote your upcoming fight, brother. Thanks, man. Sounds good, man. Thank you guys for having me. All right, have a good one. You are now listening to Afro Mighty Radio.